Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of the solo Concordia Venus. The solo mode called Concordia Solitaria provides either two player co-op or solo or team mode or <laughs> you can actually add that as a third player when you're playing. Lots of awesome things and I've got to say my wife and I played the cooperative variant of this and it's awesome. It's really good. We were actually going to record it, but after two and a half hours of just playing it, we went, yeah, that's going to be a lot to record. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you the solo variant here. As you likely know, Euro games are not my speciality, so make sure to turn on those Klingon subtitles just in case I make any mistakes. But you can watch this to see if this is something you're interested in. I have to say, not being a Euro gamer, I actually love this game. I love how it works. The actions that you choose, the cards that you play are also the victory points that you make. Yeah, it's really cool. So we're going to be going to get up against an AI trying to score more victory points than it does. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do our setup and start our playthrough. First thing I want to mention, I am playing on the Corsica map. This is an expansion map. It is the smallest one. Uh, you can play on any map with the AI. However, the smaller the map, the more that we get in the way of each other. So I thought this would be a good map to showcase the AI. Because we're playing on a smaller map, when we set up our city tiles, we're only going to be using A's, B's, and D's. No C's at all. I think there's 20 total locations. I'm also going to be playing with the salt expansion. So that means in each of these, I've removed a food from the A, I've removed a tool from the B, and I've removed a brick from the D. You don't have to do that if you aren't playing with the salt expansion. I just like the salt expansion because it adds a wild resource. On the board, you're going to see different sections with letters above them. What you need to do is place out those city tiles after randomly shuffling them all face down. And after you've done that on all the city tiles, you're going to flip them over. Once you've done this, your board will look something like this. You're going to have the five different resource types. We have brick, then we have food, then we have tools, then we have wine, cloth, and then finally the salt, which is a wild resource. Next, you'll look in each region and find the most expensive good, excluding salt. Salt isn't included. So if we're looking at this region, the most expensive is actually food, which is actually quite cheap. We're going to place a production tile of food right here then to denote that whenever you produce in that region, you're guaranteed to obtain one food. Plus, wherever you have trade uh, buildings, you'll also gain those resources. You can see the pecking order for the different types of goods on this card. So you can see brick is the lowest, cloth is the highest. When you've completed this part of setup, this is what it would look like. Now, unique to this board, because there's only nine regions, you have a spot here with two coins. We'll talk about how that works when we play. Just know we don't need to place anything here, and that's unique to this board. So if you're playing a different board, you likely won't see this. Both you and the AI will then place one land colonist, and one of the boat colonists here in Alaria. And you can always tell where the starting location is on each map. It does not have a letter up here. If it has a letter, you'll have it covered with a city tile. So we all start in this city. That's important because when you're playing the game, you actually will move them to being in between two cities. Uh, they won't be moving from city to city. It'll be in between a city to in between another city. So it's important though when they start or if you any, ever put out more colonists, they're actually in a city. The next part of setup is creating our personality deck. Because we're playing the solo game, we'll have all the level twos for the solitaire game and all the level ones. Each of these are shuffled up individually. You'll then place the ones on top of the twos, and then you'll reveal seven out on the board. These seven cards can be purchased both by ourselves as well as the AI. They give you different ways to score victory points as well as actions throughout the game. That's what's so cool about this game. Your cards give you actions in the game, and at the end of the game, you'll use the ability on the bottom here to score victory points. When you're playing against the AI, they get to obtain one specialist personality card from the display area. It will either be the Mason, the Farmer, or the Smith. The first one from left to right. Well, the Smith is right here, so they're going to grab this right off the get-go. We'll slide all these down. This is important because one of the ways this game ends is when all of these cards that are here, plus the ones in this stack, are gone, the game is over. And whoever triggers that gains 7 victory points. The other way you can end the game is by placing out your 15th trading post. When you, once you do that, that triggers the end of the game, and then you'll count up points. 
We can now set up the AI. How we do this is we grab the five cards that have a red back like this, plus that one specialty card that they just gained, and we'll have them out in a tableau. We need to have them out because there's a card in our hand and we can potentially purchase more of them called a Diplomat. That means we can copy any one of these cards. Once we do that though, then we flip them face down. We can't copy them again. Because I'm playing with the Salt expansion, we also have forum cards. They call them cards. I don't know. I, I more think of them as tiles. The AI will start the game with one randomly drawn blue one. And then every time we claim one, they'll also claim one just the farthest left one. They're going to score three victory points for every blue one. So you can see that they already have three points because of that. And two for every green one. They will never use the abilities here, so you can totally ignore that. Just know that that's going to be three points for them. They will have all 15 of their trading posts, and then they have their four colonists here that they can potentially put on the board throughout the game. Here we have our setup for the game. We start with six bucks, and I am using these iron clays. I love them. They look fantastic. I highly recommend picking them up. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get them, but I use that instead of the uh, cardboard money. <laughs> I also am not going to call it the right name, so I'm just going to call it money, okay? Uh, so we have six money that we start with. We have our four colonists that actually take up room in our storage unit. We can never have or fill out this storage unit and then place more uh, pieces there. So we're limited to only having two open spaces here. But if we can get some of these colonists on the board, we then have more room to store other goods. We start with one of every good type. And since we're playing with that salt expansion, we have a salt here. I also have two blue uh, form cards that we can choose which one to start with in the game. The other one will simply get shuffled in. And then we have our starting seven personality cards. These all have victory points at the bottom and they all do different actions. And then when we play them, the fun part about this game is that the AI simply reacts based upon what card we play. It's really cool. So that means the AI turns are fast, quick. You know what they're going to be if you play a certain card. The two options for us for our forum abilities is every house costs one buck less, or we have replace the additional cloths uh, with any goods. And that's whenever you do the senator action. And this is whenever you do the architect action. So when you buy certain cards, sometimes they have an additional cost of being a cloth. It could be anything. The cloth is the most expensive and one of the harder ones to get. So that's awesome. But having every house cost one less just seems even more awesome. So I think I'm going to choose this one. I'll shuffle this in and then we'll reveal four forum tiles. Here are the four forum tiles that are available to us. Whenever we do our Tribune action, depending on how many cards we pick up, we can go up to that far and choose one of the tiles. So if we pick up eight cards when we use that Tribune card, we could choose one of these three forum tiles. But if I only picked up four, the only one I could choose is this one. The final part of setup, and it's hard to see, it's way on the top of the board, is setting up victory points. The AI is at zero, and since we're playing on the easiest level, which is normal, we actually start with 20 victory points. So you can see my black token is all the way over to the right side at 20, and the AI is at zero. I almost forgot, what good is a Euro game if you don't have some dice, right? <laughs> <laughs> so these dice are only used for the AI and it's going to be used to determine maybe a card that they take or where they're going to build or what type of colonist they're going to put out on the board. And with that, I think we're ready to start. Now, this game is super easy. We're going to play a card. We're going to do our action and then the reaction of the AI. And then we're just going to keep playing cards. <laughs> and then we're going to do that until someone has put all 15 of these out or all of the personality cards have been purchased. Now, I'm going to go through the victory points and how the cards work as we play them because I don't want to overwhelm you with all the different things right on the get go. So I think the first thing we're going to start off with with one of our seven cards is the architect. What we can do with the architect is move our colonists. Our colonists have a total move value equal to the amount of colonists we have on the board. So right now we have two colonists. We can do a total of two moves and that can be split among your colonists any way you see fit. After we do that, we can then build in adjacent cities. You'll see how that works in a second. And then the AI is simply going to take a card by rolling a blue die. Now this is how we score points with this card and we get one point for Jupiter. Each god can score you victory points in a different way. Jupiter gives you victory points for every city that's not a brick city that you have one of your trading posts in. So I'm hoping to put out two trading posts right now and that will mean that card will score me two victory points. 
However, the fun part of the game is you don't score your points until the end of the game. So you really have no idea how you're doing and how everyone else is doing. Uh, it's definitely fun to think, oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And then you end and you go, wait a second. <laughs> I'm not doing so well. I'm hoping to build both an opinion here and Mariana. So what I'm going to do is take my land colonist. It's currently in this city. It's first movement is going to be to move out of the city. Our second movement, then we can move to any of these other roads here. I'm going to move here. Since I'm in that city now, I have two cities that are adjacent to one of my colonists, and I can try and build in both of those. This also means I've blocked this road for the AI. The AI can move through the road if it has enough movement, but it cannot end here. The cost to build trading posts in different cities is all dependent upon what you see here. This is for the salt expansion and these are for all the other types. So I'm building a, a food and a salt. Normally that would cost two money. It would cost a food and a brick. But remember, all of my trading posts cost one less. So that only cost us one money. This will then cost us four bucks, a wine and a tool. That means I'll use a total of five bucks. I have our wine and tool and our food and our brick. So all we have left is a salt and a cloth. I've now placed two out of my 15 trading posts out on the board. And I've also made those locations a lot harder for the AI to be able to build there. The AI and any player when you're playing this can always build in a city with other trading posts. It's just that the cost of money is more expensive. How you calculate the cost of placing a second trading post here would be double the total sesteri. And if there was two trading posts and you're trying to place a third, it would be triple the sesteri <laughs> or, or triple the money. So if there was another regular player playing here. Now, of course, the AI doesn't use money to place things, but we do. So if I had tried to place my trading post here after the AI had, it would have cost 10 bucks instead of five. Now the AI is going to roll this blue die. It's going to take this farmer card. Oh, and I wanted that card uh, based on what we rolled. If we had rolled a four, one, two, three, four, it would have taken this one. It doesn't ever pay for it. It just simply takes it. Then we'll slide these down and then we'll place this farmer card into their tableau. The second card we're going to play is our PM Prefect card. Now, this is specific for the solo or the co-op mode. Normally, Prefect cards look like this. It's a little bit different and you'll see how it's different. So this says what you get to do is choose a province and that province produces. Then you can take the bonus good two times instead of only once. This is then what the AI is going to do. You can also always take the bottom effect, take the coins and then activate all bonus markers. I'll show you what that means in a second. And then if I chose this as my action, then the uh, AI would simply gain two victory points. Whenever you prefect, you will always gain the bonus good of whichever region you decide to activate. So if I activated this one, I'd gain one food. However, if you have trading posts in that region, you'll also gain goods based on the cities that you have trading posts in. So it would make the most sense I would do this one. Now, because I played the PM prefect, I actually get the bonus two times. That means I'll gain two food when I flip this over, plus I have a salt city, and I have a food city. So I'm gaining three food and a salt for that prefect. Now, the second option of that prefect was I could take the coins. You see how there's two coins on there? Let's say we had flipped over maybe a couple more of these. What I could do is instead of activating a region, I could just collect the coins on the back of these and then flip them over. So I'd gain two, four, five, plus the two here, that's seven, and then flip them all back but that's not what I'm doing. So let's just flip these back over. I have collected all of these goods. You can see my storage is already getting pretty full. <laughs> it goes pretty quick. Then what we have here is how the AI will activate. Number of houses in the province, minimum of two, it'll score that many victory points. Well, we have two houses in the province. The AI doesn't have any, but let's say they had, they would gain three if they had one. If they had two there, they'd gain four. But the most they're going to gain or the total amount they'll gain for this one is only two. The AI does work differently than a normal game. You normally don't score points during the game, but they will. So they're now at two. I almost forgot to show you how this card gains you victory points. This is called Saturn. So if we look here, Saturn gives you victory points per provinces that you have uh, your trading posts in. Right now we're in one province, so that would score us one point. But the more province we're in, the more points that card will be worth. 
Next, I think I'm going to Senator. One of the most important things of this game is purchasing those personality cards. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> the only way you score more points is by getting more cards in your hand that have ways for you to score points. And Vesta is the easiest one. For every 10 money you have at the end of the round, you score, or at the end of the game, you score one point. So if I have 20 money left over, or even 24 money left over, that would score me two points. So you're not going to score a ton on this one usually. All personality cards have some sort of cost. You can see this colonist card has a cost of food, but depending upon where it is in the row, there's also a cost at the bottom. If there's a question mark, you can pay any sort of resource. But for this diplomat card, you have to pay a cloth plus a tool right now in order to obtain this. I can buy two cards. So I'm going to use a food to buy a colonist, and then I'm going to use a food as my any resource and a salt as if it was a wine because salt is wild, so I can buy this Mercator. This Mercator's nice because it lets you take five money and then you can trade up to two types of goods. This colonist card helps us get more colonists on the board. You'll buy these two cards to your hand as well so they don't go to your discard pile. You can use them right away and then we'll slide the cards down. We've got another Mercator, another nice Prefect, and then I don't know if I explained these cards. These ones you can produce in all of the cities that match that type. So this would be brick, and then at the end of the game for every brick city, and salts are wild, so you can use them. If I have a salt city like I do, I can use it as one of any type of uh, city. So if I had this one, I could use it as a brick city, and so I would have right now just one city. This, this would score me three points. The AI now will build a house. They're going to build a house based upon the white die. We'll give the white die a roll and we have a brick. Whenever the AI is trying to build a house, you can use this handy dandy reference sheet to determine where it's going to go. First thing you need to look, look for is, is the city within reach? So that means we have two colonists for the AI on the board. It has to be within range too. If it's not, they can't build there. They're always going to try and build in an empty city over a city that we have one at because they want to block us, right? So they're looking for an empty city. Then they're always trying to go to a new province before an old province. And if all of those, and you still can't tell where it is, you just look by city name, A to B to C to D and so on and so forth. Currently, there's only two brick cities that are within reach, this one here and the one way up here. Well, this one starts with a V and this one starts with a T. So we can move theirs one, two, so they can block this road and they're going to build in Talkinon. After that, it's back to our turn. We're going to play our leveled up Mercator that we just got last turn. This says take five bucks. So we now go from one buck to six, which is nice. And then we can trade up to two types of goods. So we can only use two goods and we can sell as many of one good or buy as many of one good and then sell or buy as many of another good. After that, the AI will build a house using the black die and then that province is going to produce. Now the AI doesn't gain any resources or coins. That production can potentially help us or it might take all the coins in the regions and flip them over. It just depends upon where they build. In order for us to do any sort of building, we do need money, lots of money. So what I'm going to do is sell this cloth. That cloth is going to gain me seven bucks. Now, if I had had more cloth, I could have sold a bunch, as many as I wanted there for seven bucks each. Unfortunately, that's all I was able to sell because that's all I have. So I have seven plus the six from before, so I have 13. I'm then going to spend 10 of my 13 bucks to buy two tools. So I now have two tools here. I have a food, but I only have three bucks remaining. The AI will roll the black die, and it looks like he's all about brick in this game. That's another brick location. And that is literally going to foil our plans. The only brick location that is within range is this one over here. He's going to move two. And he's going to build in that region over there where I was planning on building and now I don't have enough money. Really? That province now will produce, so we'll flip this over. That just means now if we did a prefect and chose to gain the coins, we gain two, four, six. I didn't have any uh, houses or trading posts in that region, so I didn't gain any resources. Let's talk quick about how this Mercator card will gain us victory points. This is the god of Mercury. That will score us two points per different production type that excludes salt. Salt is not included. So for every of the different types of production, we have uh, brick, food, 
tool, wine, and cloth will gain two points for that card. Because the AI was so nice to me, I think I'm going to play my regular prefect. You can see here, this one just says takes the bonus good, not take two bonus goods like the PM prefect did. What I'm going to do is the bottom part here. So the AI is just going to gain two points. This is also going to score me per region. So that now means that every region that I have uh, uh, one of the trading posts in, it's going to score me two points because I have two cards that are giving me one point for that. And then we're going to take all the coins and then reactivate all the bonus goods. This means the AI will move to four points and we'll gain six bucks and flip over these two, which is actually nice because that means we can produce again in the region that we have uh, two of our uh, trading posts. Our next card we're going to play is the Diplomat. I love this card. Use one face-up card from Contrarius or the AI, and then it's going to react based on which card we do this. This also will score us one per Jupiter, so that's one victory point for every non-brick city. We're going to copy this Architect card so we can move our colonists. Our boat appears to be stuck at port because all we're doing is moving our land colonists for this game, but that's fine. <laughs> it's because I really want one, two, to be able to do production or be able to build, I should say, in cities that are in the same region because then when I produce, I get more goods. So I'm going to build here in this tool city and in this brick city. This will mean, though, that it will cost us double to build in that brick city. For the tool city, it costs us three bucks, but it's actually only two because of this, a tool, and a brick. I don't have a brick, but I have a salt. That's kind of a lot of cost for the salt. This, uh, bricks are the cheapest, but it is what it is. Okay, I, I spent the two coins. Then it costs us one buck for the brick, but that's doubled because there is uh, the AI was already there. But of course, we reduce it by one, so we'll go back to only um, costing us one. So we only have three bucks, and we have a food, and that's all we need to build or pay it to build there. And now I'm realizing I had enough money. <laughs> I had three bucks. I forgot about this ability. Oh, well, that's what you get for recording. And all I have left is a tool. And I do want to mention I have six uh, bucks left. The AI will now react by rolling this die and taking this diplomat card, which isn't terrible. I don't love the diplomat card, and we'll slide these down. We then will place this in the tableau, but I doubt we will ever be copying a diplomat because that doesn't make sense. Also, now that we have copied this architect, we'd flip it face down. I'm just going to replace it with that diplomat. They'll still score the victory points on that card, but we cannot copy it again. All right, now it's back to our turn. Well, this isn't great, but we're going to do it. I'm going to use my uh, Mercator that is one of my starting ones. It only gives us three money to begin with instead of five. So that puts us up to nine bucks. And then we can do trades of two types of goods. I have exactly five plus four, which is nine total bucks. I'm going to spend it all to get one tool for five and one food for four. That's a total of nine. Then the AI will build a house and that province will produce. We'll roll the black die and it's a food. That's what he's looking for. An empty food within range two is only going to be this one because the boat can get to maybe here or it could get to here. Oh, wait, actually one, two. No, it can't get all the way down to here. Yeah, so it's going to have to be this one. So that means we'll go one, two and have them be here. Now that province is going to produce and this might actually help us. I believe looking here, that province is not in the yellow. It's in this blue region and we have two of our own houses there. So we're going to gain one tool and one brick. We'll also flip this over to denote that they produce there. That's actually not bad at all. I love getting the brick. I have three tools. If only I had some more food, uh, but it is what it is. Our next card we're going to play is our Tribune card. This is kind of your reclaim action from Spirit Island. <laughs> You're going to be able to pick up all the cards that you've played and put them back into our hand. We played all of them except for this colonist card that we purchased a bit ago. What we get to do is take back all your cards. From the fourth card onwards, take one buck per card. And then we can put out one colonist for a food and a tool. So I definitely have that. I can place out one colonist. It's going to have to go on the uh, starting space. I'm definitely going to do a land one, not a boat. So we'll place that one out. And then what happens is we have builds one house for its best specialist. That's what's here. And then takes one colonist or one card dependent upon a red die roll. And Mars is very simple. You get two victory points per colonist on the board. So right now I'll have three on there. So that's going to be worth six points. 
I played a total of eight cards. Eight minus three is five, so I just gained five bucks. I've placed our new colonist here in Alaria. And then we can look at the AI tableau and we can see that they want to have food and tool. Both of them give them three victory points per city that they have uh, houses in. However, with the salt expansion, they also look for salt and they're going to prioritize salt because it's going to make it harder for us to build in salt. That's because salt is wild and so it can be counted for either a tool or a food when we're counting victory points. That means they most certainly have one available to them within range two of one of their colonists. I'm actually going to have a move here. We're going to place this here, and that's brutal because now it's going to cost us 10 bucks. Of course, with our ability, nine bucks, but still nine bucks to be able to put one of our houses here. Ouch. We'll now roll the red die, and you can see here they're going to place out another land colonist, which means now their movement is three instead of two. This will also be placed in Alaria. Because we just did our Tribune action, we can now claim one of these forum tiles. Now, we only picked up eight cards, so this one we can't do. We can pick up this one, this one, or this one. This one actually looks awesome because I'd love to get all of my colonists out. But if I leave this one, the AI is going to claim this one, and that's worth three points for them. So I think I'm going to pick up this one. It's just going to give us a brick and then four more spaces to put things. So I'm going to grab this. Then the AI is going to grab this one. That'll score them two points at the end of the game. We'll flip these two down and we'll replenish with two new tiles. With all of our cards back in our hand, the first thing we're going to do is our regular prefect. We're going to use one province and produce and then take one bonus good. Just so you know, I could choose one of these provinces. I didn't have any of my uh, trading posts in. I could choose this one and just gain one brocade if I really needed it. But that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose this one. So I gain a food from that plus a food and a salt here. This will mean I have two tools, two food, two brick, and one salt. The AI will simply score two points. That's because there are two houses in the region that produced. Now we're going to play our colonist card. And what we can do is for each food and each tool that we spend, we can place out one colonist. So I'm actually going to put out two colonists. I've got two tools and two food. And the fun part about these colonists is they can be placed in any of the cities that we have a house in or the starting one. Of course, then the AI will also try and place one out. I'm going to place our boat colonist way over here and then our other land colonist here. And the reason for that is look at this. There are no houses in this region, so I need to start utilizing that. The AI will then pick up this die and roll it and he will get another boat. We'll place that boat in this starting region. I don't love doing this, but I only have two brick and a salt. <laughs> I can't do much with that. So I'm going to diplomat and I'm going to diplomat their prefect. I'm actually going to diplomat this prefect and simply use the bottom to reactivate all the bonus markers, gaining coins. That means the AI will gain two victory points and we'll flip this one over. That'll move them to eight points. We'll gain a total of six bucks again, flipping these two over. And remember, that's always active. Now we can use our better prefect card and we're going to get double the bonus goods, a minimum of two victory points for the AI. And that's what they're going to score. They'll move right up to 10 points. We're going to choose this region again, which means we'll gain two food for that. Plus, we get one food because of where our houses are and one more salt. In our storage area, we have three food, two salt, and two brick. Plus, we have a total of 11 bucks. The next card we're going to play is our Mercator. This one lets us gain another five bucks. So we have 16 bucks to play with. And now we can trade up to two goods. The first thing we're going to do is sell all three of this food. That's four, eight, 12. We just gained 12 bucks for that. I will take it. I had to do some looking at the board and I think what I'm going to do for our second good that we buy or sell is simply buy two tools. So that's 10 bucks that we just spent. That means we still have 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18 total money left. The AI will then roll the black die and they're going to try and build in another food location. 
There are two empty food locations. They can get to all of them. Let's see, one, two, three, or one, two. Yep, so it's just going to be, and they're all in new regions. So it's just alphabetical. This is a P, and that's an M. So they're going to do here, simply moving one, two, three, and placing one of their houses there. After that, that region will produce, and that region is right here. It's now time for us to architect. So let's move our colonists. We have five on the board, so we can move up to five spaces and then build in adjacent cities. Now, if I was cool, I could build in, you know, four or five cities at this point. I think I'm still only going to do two because it doesn't have to be adjacent just to the colonists that we move. It can be any of our colonists. They can build in adjacent cities. I know I want to move this uh, colonist two to here. And then this land colonist, one, two, and three to this location. That means we've done a total of five movement. I'm then going to build a house here, a tool house and a cloth house. The total cost for that is four plus two, which is six. I definitely have that five and one. So I've made that payment. And then I need to pay a brick and a cloth. So I'll do a brick and a salt. And then I need to do a brick and a tool. I have that here. The AI is then going to take a card. It's going to take the Mason card. So it's just going to get all the victory points for all the different types of locations. I'm specifically looking for the cloth one. Uh, and that should be coming out in one of these last three cards. There's only three left here. And the Weaver, we have it right here. But that's going to be super expensive. If we tried to buy that, we would need to spend a brick, a cloth, and two more cloth. So I'm going to have to wait till that gets a little farther down here. I'm not sure if this is the best idea, but we're going to do it anyways. We're going to Tribune, take back all of our cards. We have a tool and a salt for food so we can place out our last colonist. Now this one has to go in the starting location. We don't have an option. We're also going to gain one, two, three. So we're going to gain one, two, three, four more bucks. I'll get a five and turn in a one. That means I have a total of 16 bucks. We've placed our final colonist on the board. We now have six movement for our colonist. We can go anywhere we want, <laughs> kind of. We also get to grab a forum tile. We can only grab a four and a six, not the eight or the 10. So I think I'm gonna get this one. We can build one house without paying the money. Eh, that's okay. It's a one-time use. If we don't use it, we don't use it. Oh, the AI will then grab this one, which will be another two points for them at the end of the game. We'll slide these down and replenish them with two new ones. The AI will then build one house for its best specialist, but remember there's salt and they can get to a salt and that's the last salt that doesn't have a house on it. Yeah, definitely gonna go for that one. And then rolling the red die. Okay, they're gonna claim the card in the spot number one uh, for the specialty cards. They will grab this prefect card. We've now revealed another colonist card. Now this is only tempting to me because it's worth 12 points. I've already done the main effect. I could play to get a bunch of money too, but 12 points is nothing to scoff at for one card. We have absolutely zero goods, which is not a good place to be. <laughs> so I am going to use our PM prefect here so we can get two bonus goods. And the AI will score the minimum two victory points. This will push them up to 12. The region we're going to choose is this orange one. Normally we'd gain one cloth, we're gonna gain two cloth. Not to mention, we have a cloth and a tool we'll also produce there. So we just earned three cloth and a tool. I'm really not sure this is worth it, but we're going to do another prefect, just our regular one. We're gonna choose a province to produce and then take the bonus good, but there are a total of one, two, three, four houses there. So the AI is gonna score four victory points. The AI will move from 12 all the way up to 16. The region that's going to produce is this one. So we'll get one bonus tool and a tool and a brick because we have buildings there. Now, if the AI was a regular player, that regular player would also gain a food and a brick because they had houses there when we produced. This does mean we're starting to load up on some goods, but it came at a cost of six victory points. <gasps> so we better make it worth it. The next card we're going to play is our Senator, so we can buy up to two personality cards. We're gonna buy both of these architects. So that will be one tool for this one, a tool for this one, and the bonus good we have to pay is the brick. 
So we'll grab both of these into our hands. This means there's only six cards left in the game. I like to put this card here to remind myself once all of these cards are gone, that's one of the ways the game end is triggered and that person or player gains these seven victory points from that card. We'll now roll the white die for the AI and they're going for yet another brick. They love brick. There's only two brick locations with no houses and they're both in the same region. <laughs> So we're just gonna go alphabetical. It's going to be this one. They can certainly reach that. We'll place them here. Our next card to play is our Mercator. That will give us five money and we can trade up to two goods. We're going to spend a total of 15 bucks so we can get five brick. Then we're gonna get seven of that 15 bucks back by selling one cloth. That means we have a total of 13 bucks remaining. The NPC will then build a house looking for a tool. That bugger of an AI is going to grab the final tool spot. That is definitely within range. One, two, placing them here. And of course, I was going to build their next turn and now it's double the price. The AI is going to make me spend all of my money for this, but it's worth it. I am going to architect so I can move my colonists up to six spaces and then build. I'm going to move this boat colonist one space to here. This land colonist is going to move two, three, so I still have three more movement. And I think I'm going to grab one of my boats, four, five, and six. Just getting them around to the other side of the board. It'll be expensive, but I'm going to build here a tool, a cloth, and another cloth uh, city. So that's a total of three locations. The two cloth locations, I need two cloth and two brick. I have all of that. And then for the tool, I needed a tool and a brick. I have that. For the total money, this will cost four twice, so that's eight. This is going to cost six, but minus one is five. Eight plus five is 13. I have five, 10, 11, 12, 13, just enough. The AI will then take card number three, one, two, three, that's this console. We now only have five cards left in the queue. I will tell you there are two that I really want, the Prefect and the Weaver. I could give up the Mercator, the Colonist, and the uh, Vintner. I really want this Prefect, and if I'm going to even get close, I have to get this Weaver. With only two brick in my storage area and no money, I've got to play the colonist. And I'm going to do this bottom effect. I'm going to gain five bucks plus one per colonist. So that's 11. So I'm going to gain 11 bucks, but that means the AI is just going to score two points. That'll move them up to 18. I'm just not playing a great game here, but that's okay. I'm going to play Tribune next. So we're going to gain coins equal to one, two, three. Then we get one, two, three, four more bucks. That means I have a total of seven here. I'm going to get a five and return a one. So that means I have 15 bucks that I can use. Looking at my options, I might as well grab this one when buying bricks. The first brick is free. That means the AI is going to grab this one, which is going to score them three points. Oh, I doubt I'm going to Tribune again before the game ends, but you never know. The AI will then try and build in one of these two locations. This one is a P, that's a T. They definitely can get to this one. So we'll place one here, one, two. They can choose either one because they both score the same amount of victory points and they're in both region, regions. So it's just looking at alphabetical. We'll then roll the red die and they're going to place out a boat. That will be their fifth colonist. Now it's back to us. We'll start off with our prefect here. We're going to do the bottom, take the coins and then activate all bonus markers. That means the AI will just score two points. That means they have now tied us up at 20. At least we're going to gain a bunch of money. Two, four, six, seven, plus two more is nine. That means we have 24 bucks to play with. I'm then in some dire need for some cloth. <laughs> So let's do another prefect. We're going to choose a province to produce, but we're going to take the bonus good two times. Fortunately for us, there's only two houses in that region, so we'll put them up to 22. You can probably guess which one we're going to do, the orange one. So that will give us two brocade for that. And I sometimes say brocade, that's because of Orléans. <laughs> so that should be cloth. We'll get a third cloth and a tool for that region as well. And what the hey? Let's go ahead and diplomat 
a prefect on the uh, AI side because I love making resources for some reason. We're going to choose the same one up here. Minimum of two victory points for the AI. I'll have to figure out what it is, but our bonus goods times two. Lucky for us, there's still only two houses in the region we're going to produce, so it's only two more points. We're going to produce in this region, which will give us two food, plus a food and a salt. Now we're sitting with a nice full storage unit. Let's play our senator. This will allow us to purchase up to two cards into our hand. We'll use the salt to buy this prefect because I love making resources. We have a brick and a cloth here for the weaver plus the tool for the one additional resource so we can buy both of these. There's now only three cards left. The AI will roll the white die and is going to look for yet again another brick. That will be the last location. One, two, three that does not have a house for bricks. Uh, right here. Apparently no one wanted to go for wine. All three wine locations completely empty. I need to get one in there to maximize my points. So that's my goal. I do have a house on all three of the cloth cities. So I'm going to play the weaver to gain three cloth. You essentially produce in those three locations. The AI will just earn three more points. That will move them from 24 to 27. Next, I think we're going to do the Mercator, gaining five bucks, and we can trade up to two goods. I don't need any of this cloth, so seven, 14, 21, 28, 35 bucks. I'll then spend 24 bucks here to buy six wine. <laughs> Let's see if I can make a last ditch effort for the wine. That does mean I still have for money 10, 20, 30, 40 total bucks. The AI will then build a house and finally it's going to be a wine location. The only region they're not in is this one. So they're gonna come here. Well, actually that's not true. There's other regions that they're not in, but the only region with wine that they're not in is this one. We'll place a house here and then that location produces. Unfortunate for us, that location has already been produced. Now, what you need to do is look to see if three of these have been flipped over. We only have two, but I believe because this is a smaller board, this is always considered as one. So there are three flipped over. So then we'd flip all of them back over. Let me know if I'm wrong on that, but I believe that makes the most sense. So now if we produce here, we can get goods. They don't get, get those coins. They just simply uh, take those coins away from us if we tried to do that with our uh, uh, prefect. The next action we're going to take is our prefect up here, gaining two of the bonus goods. We'll choose this region to produce. That means we'll gain two tools there, plus a tool and a brick, but unfortunately one, two, three, four, four total houses. That means the AI, <laughs> they're gonna kill me. One, two, three, four, they're at 31 points. With all of this though, I believe we should be able to get some buildings down. So I am hoping to do an architect here. Let's see how many I can get down. I have one, two, three, four, five, six left. With the architect, I will move one, two, three with this land colonist and we'll move this colonist four, five. So it's right here. We'll start by building a salt city here. Now, normally that would cost us 10 coins minus one because of our ability, but we're going to use this. Build one house without paying the Sisteri. Yes, no cost. All we need to be able to build there is one wine and one tool. Beautiful. So that one's done. We're then going to build a house here in this region, in the food region. We needed a brick and a food. We have both of those. That normally costs two. We double that to four minus one is three. I have the three bucks here, no problem. That's two houses built. I'd like to have a house in this region and we just so happen to have a wine here. So I have a brick and a wine and that costs us four minus one. So that's only three coins to be able to place a house there. So that's our third house that we've placed. And then the final house that we're going to build is this salt house. Normally that costs 10 minus one because of our ability. So that's nine. We have a five and four ones and all the resources needed. And that's our fourth house built. We only have two houses remaining. That felt pretty good. We'll go to the AI's turn. They're just simply going to take this Mercator card. 
We'll slide these down, two cards left, and two houses left. The AI has three houses left. Actually, I'm wrong, it's four houses. I'm sure I could figure out something better, but at this point, <laughs> we're just gonna Mercator. <laughs> we're gonna Mercator, this one is not the leveled up one. We're just gonna gain three total bucks. We're then going to buy and sell up to two goods. The only thing I'm going to do is buy brick. I'm gonna gain this brick for free because of this ability. Uh, I am not going to buy anything else or sell anything else. So now we're going to have the AI build a house and then that province produces. We'll roll the die and they're looking for a tool. There's a tool here, but I think instead what they're going to do is go one, two, three, because they would prefer to have the salt because that's going to give them another region and salt is wild. Yeah, they're just going to, every victory point I'm getting, they're getting just one more. <laughs> One nice thing is that region will produce. We have a food and a salt will gain because of that. We'll go ahead and finish the game here, placing out our last two houses with a move and a build. We're going to build here with a salt as our brick and our food here. That will cost normally four minus one, so it's only three. We'll place that here. And then we might as well build on the cheapest spot <laughs> that doesn't have anything there. Normally that costs four, but we can do it with three. We have a brick and a wine, and that means that's our last one. The AI gets to do its reaction, and that's the end of the game. The reaction is grabbing one of these cards. It's a number one, so it's going to grab this colonist. I really wanted the colonist, and I wanted the vintner. Oh well, it is what it is. Because we won, though, we will gain this seven victory point card. And I'm going to give myself that seven points right now. So we didn't even catch up to him. <laughs> okay, now let's do the scoring so you can see how that works. Before you start scoring, you are able to take everything in your storage area and convert it into money. So this would be five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we have a ten here and three more. Plus we have our ten two fives, and two more ones for our total money. We'll start by scoring the forum cards. Ours aren't worth anything unless we had one that specifically gave us victory points. It doesn't. So they get three for each of the blue ones. So that's six, and then two for these, seven, eight, nine, ten. That'll move them from 31 to 41. Now let's score Vesta. Only we can score points for Vesta because we're the only ones that claimed actual money in the game. So that's one point, that's two points, and that's three points. I've got five left over, but that doesn't get us to another 10. So three whooping points. <laughs> we'll move from 27 to 30. This is the AI cards, and these are our cards. We're now going to do Jupiter. So first you want to see how many cards have Jupiter on them. We have one, two three, four, so we have four. So we're gonna have a multiplier of four for Jupiter. And Jupiter is the number of non-brick cities that we have. For the AI, it'll be one, two, three, and that's it. So their multiplier is only three versus ours, which is four. We only have one brick city, this one, and there's a total of 15 houses. So that means we have 14 times four or 56 points. <laughs> the AI, remember how many bricks we rolled on this die? Well, they only have eight total locations at uh, times three. So that's only 24 points for them. That was a huge advantage for us. That means we moved to 86 and the AI is at 65. For Saturn, we need to see how many regions we have our houses in. We both have them in all nine. So it's gonna be nine times whatever we have here. I have one, two, three, so nine times three, that's 27. The AI has one, two, three, four. Okay, so they're gonna come back on that one a little bit. Nine times four is 36. It's now 101 to 113. Still pretty close, only 12 points apart. The next one is Mercury, looking at the different types of productions. Salt does not count for this one, so it's just five total locations. I have all five, so mine is going to be five times however many of these I have. I have two and four, so five times four is 20. Guess what they never built in? Cloth. So they're only a four. Four times two, which is, uh, and four, so that's 16. 20 to 16, we beat them on that one. We're at 133 to 117. 
for Mars, we look at the amount of colonists we have out. Well, we had all six. Six times two times four. Six times four is 24. The AI only had five, and there's two plus another two, which is four. Five times four is 20. So we extend our lead by four points. We're now at 157 compared to 137. Last but not least are the Minerva cards, and I got a lot here. <laughs> I have five victory points for every cloth uh, product producing city and salt because I can make the salt a cloth city for this. So that's five times six because there's three salt and there's three cloth and I have all three. So that's 30 points right here. Whew. Uh, the AI though will gain three points for all three different types plus salt city type as well, but they're all only three. I believe they have 11 cities, so it'd be 11 times 3, which is 33 points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, not that one, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yep, so 33 points for them and 30 for us. And I believe that means we actually won 170 to 187. So we won by 17 points. That was actually not bad. Well, I have to say that was just so much fun. You know, I have now played this game. I think I'm on my 10th play and that was completely different than any other play I've ever done. I have never had so much challenges finding brick locations, but you can see I didn't go to those brick cities. Usually I go to more brick cities and it ended up being good for me for scoring. But during the game, it was it felt so hard to get brick. <gasps> but don't you love that? How it ended up being a good thing in the game. I, I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough, and always thank you so much for watching, commenting, subscribing, and as always, I'll see you at the next stop.